So welcome once more to this web design and development lecture series. This is the second video on the lecture series. And for this video, we'll be looking at headings in details. In the first video, we just introduce it. We'll be looking at headings, we'll be looking at lines. How do you draw lines on your web page? We'll be looking at comments and why comments are important in programming. In web development, we will also be looking at paragraphs. We introduce paragraph, but we didn't go into detail. We'll be looking at paragraph. We'll be looking at uh, text formatting. How do we format our text, changing the color, increasing the font size and the like. We'll be looking at elements. We'll talk about elements. The HTML tags, we'll talk about them. Not in details, but we'll be discussing them here. We'll also be discussing attributes. We'll also be discussing images. We we'll introduce images in the first tutorial. <laughs> we insert the image and then we use some attributes to resize the image. We'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at how to create lists. We'll be looking at tables. We'll be looking at links. How do you link pages? We'll be looking at inline and block elements. And lastly, we'll look at forms. And so let's get started. So open your text editor and go back to that page you are working on in the folder you saved. In that folder you created, where, as, like I said, every content of your web page should be saved in your folder so that it be easy to access. So go right back to that folder and on that same page, let's see how it works. So like I said earlier, for the headings, we have basically six types of headings. HTML provides six different types of headings. And the differences between those headings are the sizes. So H1 is the largest heading. We have H2, we have H3, H4, H5, and H6. So just do copy and paste. We change the numbers here to H2. The third one, we change it to H3. The fourth will be changed to H4 until 6. And we'll save it and view it in our web browser and see what the content will look like. What the content will look like. So what you will observe is that they will just be reducing in sizes. So H6 is the smallest size of headings and each one is the largest size of heading so we'll go to our page here and we'll refresh the page what you see what you observe here is that the heading sizes have been reduced as it comes from h1 is the larger h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 is the smallest heading so that's what it refers to in html and it provides <coughs> provides a heading to our basic web page HTML headings for our basic web page so again keep into mind so the differences you notice between the headings is that the sizes so H1 is the largest heading and then H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6 so that is it for headings that's how you include headings on your web page and the headings are used for the sizes so like for example for a paragraph you can have a heading for the paragraph to distinguish the size of the text that is a heading or this is just a common text in a paragraph so let's look at lines how do we how do we get lines in our web page so We'll go back to our text editor, to our code, and go between H1 and H2, and just put HR close. So HR is for our horizontal line. It stands for horizontal line. So save it. Go to your web browser. Save it. Go to your web browser. And refresh the page. What you see? You see, lines have been drawn, so that's how we put lines on our web page. So, 
we use the HR tag or element to give us what a horizontal line. The HR stands for horizontal line. So we use that to get horizontal line. So let's see. Again, let's look at comments. So what are the benefits of comments? So what comment does in programming and coding as a whole is that uh, it helps to provide description of the code. If you write a piece of code, for example, if we're doing object-oriented programming, maybe Java or Python, probably you are writing a method or a function that is going to calculate the area of a triangle or a function to return certain value. So you have to include comments. So what a comment does is that it helps other programmers to understand your code. Because when you develop a web page, it needs maintenance. So if you are working in your institution and you work on a project, you have to include comments in your code so that when you leave the institution and the other programmer comes, it becomes easier for them to understand what you did. You understand? For them to understand what you did. So comments are very much important. So for instance, there are different ways that you do comments in various languages. So like for HTML, you comment like this. And so, and comments when closed like this. So your comment go between here, yeah, where your comments go. So one other thing you should understand about comments is that comments are not being read. So anything that we put in between this tag as a comment will not appear on our HTML page, will not appear on our web page. So for example, like we did, so let's save this and refresh our page. You will notice that there will be no changes made on our view. If you save and refresh it, you will see no changes will be made because it's a comment. So it's just being read by other programmers, it's not being shown on the web page. So comments in every programming language is not being for example, the object oriented programming languages that use interpreters or compilers, you see that the interpreter or the compiler will ignore that line of code. Any line of code that is being commented will be ignored. Any line of code that is commented will be in. Okay, so comments are always ignored by the, the interpreter or compiler in object oriented program, but in the case of a web developing web development, the comment is in nobody the browser. The browser doesn't interpret that content. The browser doesn't read that. So next we will look at uh paragraphs. Paragraphs. So paragraphs are basically elements or tags that helps us to type much much contents on our web page. So, for instance, uh, we can say, let's remove this to provide a basic structure and the paragraph went together by P. So, and like I said, every HTML will have opening and closing tags. So, now here we can say, like, uh, okay, let's get some text from somewhere. Much text and display it in our web page and see how it will look. Uh, let's see some text. Uh, okay, let's pause the video. We'll be back sharply. Let me get okay. Let's say we get this text. I copy this text and we take it to our text editor and we paste it in our paragraph. So what you observe is that uh, this text will appear in our web page. So basically you use uh you use paragraph to hold a large content of text. So let's save this and go to our web browser and refresh our page. So you see. The text appears in our web page. So HTML interprets this, HTML translates the HTML, uh, the web browser translates and interprets this. It helps us to view it. But let's see what we observed. If you look at the text editor, we have many lines. But you see, our first line ends to second line to that. But if you see in our web browser, HTML interprets this, you see our first line doesn't end to this. Is because uh, HTML or the web browser just interpret this as just lines. 
So what do we do if we want to provide? It's maybe by paragraph, paragraph. So what we do is that we use the one, the break tag, like we use in the first lecture series. Use the break tag. So what a break tag will do is that a will create a new line. When you say break, a meaning this ends here, and we need a new line. So that's what the break means. Break means what new line. It creates a new line. It gives you a new line. So let's refresh this and see what happens. You see now where we put the break after profit. So now it stopped there and gave us a new line. Where we put the break after forces, it gave us a what a new line. So that's what break does. So let's put it in better structure. Copy this. And we'll put a two breaks. Now let's say breaks here also and breaks. And let's go back and refresh our page. And you see, so it gave us that basic structure. So what break does in paragraph is that all what break does in HTML content is that it helps you to give spaces to give you new lines. So that's what break does in paragraph. So that's it for paragraph. Let's see, let's move to text formatting. How do we format our text? How do we format our text in HTML? How do we format our text in HTML? And we'll be looking at uh, adding colors to our text. We'll be looking at adding colors to our text. We'll be looking at increasing our font size. We'll be looking at many exciting things that we can do with so let's see let's start from uh, the heading let's start from the heading and let's start from the heading and we go forward so for example for this heading we can move our heading to the center and there are two ways we do either we use CSS or we just do it directly from HTML since we haven't started CSS so let's do it directly from so we use the center tag. We use the word the center tag. So basically everything HTML has been done by tag so far, as you observed. And opening tag and closing tag. And the difference is that closing tag you have a word forward slash. Good. So let's save this and let's go to our web browser and view it and see what happens. You see my first web page. That heading that Let's move to the wire, the center. So we can also format our text. For example, we want to make this text bold. Business environment. We want to make this text bold. So what we do? Open. We say B. Close. And then the text we want to make bold. We put it in the open and closing tag of B. And this means what? Bold to bold that text. So if we save and you go to a web browser and view. You see that that specific text based environment was what a bold. So you can use bold, you use strong, you use what big. And they are all as so let's see for anchor passes. Let's see anchor passes. Let's put it in strong and let's see what happens. So, like I said, always remember opening and closing. Open and closing tax, open and closing tax. So it's a strong. We go to our web page with we use strong. You see what happens and compasses the tense bold. So we use strong or you use bold. It gives you a dark color, a dark content of your text. So the same way you go to Microsoft Word, like for example, highlight this, we click on italic. Our writings way getting your star form. This is the same thing you do, the same thing in HTML by using the same italic, but being represented by I. So, for instance, let's say Michael F. Porter we want to make it italic. So, we just open, we say I close. And at the end of it, we say open forward slash. And once we save, it makes that text word italic. You see, Michael Porter has turned to italic just like the same way we did in microsoft word so now let's go back and say let me make micro bold so we're adding two 
format to it to make it italic to make it bold when we refresh you see michael turns bold and it's in a italic form so there are a lot of exciting tags you use for text formatting in html you can research on some debit school you can also research on some platforms do some research you see some exciting tags to use so basically these are some things we do with text formatting and there are other things we do also with text formatting like for example like in microsoft we have subscripts so where as we 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 do things where we make some content we make some content like for example power stays raised to the power of two seven raised to the power of three and so forth so how do we do that also in html yeah ways we also do them in html so let's see how we we include subscripts so like for example go to microsoft word so here in microsoft word if i want to say two raised to the power of three i have to click on this x superscript and say two or three two raised to the power of three so how do we do this in html how do we use html to do this and also i want to say maybe Subscript base 10 to the base of what? Maybe base 3 or base 6, base 7. How do we do the also with HTML? So HTML also provides element or tag that help us do that. So let's see this in our text editor. So let's say that like create a break. Because if we just enter in the text editor, it won't take effect on our web page. So we say break. And we say break two times to break and now we say let's say two we say two now we open and say what superscript three open and closing tab so what we did here is that we make three to be superscript meaning three will appear on top of two as a power so we save this and let's refresh the page and see what happens so you see we have what uh, two to the power of what uh, three. So also instead of saying soup, we say sub for subscript. So to say maybe one ten base this, so we say subscript base ten close. Uh, we save this. You see that in our browser it appears what uh, say one ten to base what. Uh, so these are there are more exciting things you do with text. So let's check out and you make form. Okay. So now we move on to elements. Elements. So we'll be looking at elements and like I said in the introduction to, to, to the series, the first lecture. Uh we said elements are also tags. Elements are tags. There are other type of elements like we have the diff element. I have to provide vision on our page. We have the navigation. We have many, many super elements. So we we'll look out for some elements that we use. So HTML element document are made out of HTML document are made up of what elements. Everything we do on our on our HTML contents, we use elements. All of these things we have been using, open and closing tags, they are all our elements. So an element is written using a start tag and what end tag. So or end tag or start tag and or end tag give you our element. So for example, for example, where we say H maybe A6. So the H6 opening and closing tags are referred to as what elements. Are referred to as elements. So Going further, we'll explore more elements. We'll explore more elements in our HTML content. So, for example, so like I said, we have been using elements throughout. So, every HTML tag opening and closing tag are referred to as elements. So, now we we'll look at attributes. We we'll look at attributes. And what are attributes? So attributes 
are additional information about an element. Attributes are additional information about an element. Attributes are additional function, additional things you can do with our, our elements. So attributes are always specified in a start tag. For example, this heading. This heading can have attributes. There are a lot of attributes of the heading, which include font size, font type, and the like. So for example, we could say font family. So the font family is a type of uh, fonts. Maybe like in Microsoft, you have New Time Roman, you have old English text and, 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 and the like. So elements are additional what functions or additional things you can do with your HTML elements. Attribute are additional thing you do with the HTML element. Attribute comes in name and value pairs, meaning you have to give the name. For example, like you said, like you saw in the first lecture series, we we'll insert the image. Let's say we we'll insert the same image, open the image, and one of the attributes of image that you have to put in first is the source, meaning the director of the image, where can we locate the image? So we have one image in our photo. Like I said, everything you do on this web, on, on your web content should be within a folder. So we created one folder, and this is the folder I created. So I have the image in this folder. So I'm just going to reference the image from this folder. So I go to my text editor, and I say dtech.apg. The dpg is a directory, the fat tip, not directory, but the fat tip. The type of image we have PNG image, JPG image, JPEG image, we have GIF image, and etc. So you see the SRC. Another attribute also for image we say ALT author. So author is when when the image doesn't appear. So that's the name that will appear. Or if you hover over the image, that's the name that will appear. So let's say coding. So we say Coding is just the author is just something to describe the image. And another attribute of image is the height. Image have height, right? So our height, let's say we make our height 500 either pixel or just 500. So we say weight. Let's say our weight, let's say 400 and four slash is just for image. So we save this. This should give us our content, our image in our web page. So we'll refresh this, you see? We'll refresh it, we'll have our image. Our image will appear in the web, the web page. So there were attributes that we use. There were attributes, like you see, SRC, meaning what source, where the image is located. ALT is just description of the image. So you see, when the image does not appear, if the image does not appear, that would be the name that will appear in our content, in our box that, that will appear. So, for example, let's miss the direction of the image. Let's say the data tab, the fat tab, will say JPEG, because the fat tab is JPG. So, let's say JPEG and see what happens. So, we refresh it, you see it. What appears here is what coding the author, meaning if the image doesn't appear, maybe, for example, your web page is loading, but because of internet connection, it didn't load well. So anywhere image, anywhere that image is placed where it's supposed to be, the name that will appear there to represent that image. The name that represents that image. So you see, we put coding. So you see there. So we'll go back to our text editor and remove the E control S. We'll go back to the web browser, refresh it, you see the image appear. So that's it for ALT, meaning alternative. Meaning when the image when meaning when you see the word alternative. Right, alternative is option. So when the image doesn't appear, this will appear. So that's the alternative. ALT means alternative. Then another attribute added is the height, and another attribute is the word width. So that's it for attribute. That's how attribute works. Attribute gives us additional things to do with our HTML elements. So you see, like for example, if we talk about links. If we for links, there are other attributes for links, there are attributes for tables. So we discuss images and some attributes of images the size, meaning the width, the height, and the source of the image. ALT alternative, meaning when the image doesn't appear, what should appear is the alternative. 
So now we'll look at list. That two type of list, there are basically two types of list in HTML. We have the word the order list and the word the on order list. So what are the difference between order list and on order list? Order list, you see, you will have order list can give you one, two, three, four, five, six. It gives you the counts of numbers. But on order on order list just give you like bullet like in microsoft word so let, let's try that experiment in microsoft word so that you get the basic understanding for example we want to list some things so we'll come to, to bullet and probably we'll choose this so now we'll start to tap over the list of things so in html html referred to this kind of list that doesn't have numbers as well on other list but whereas we will have numbers at pass one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To go up war. This is referred to as a why order list. So how can we create a list in HTML?